I often get asked where I get the wood that I use in my projects and in this video I'll be answering that question as best I can. I like to use reclaimed and salvaged wood as much as possible in my projects. Finding new uses for old materials is kind of what excites me the most about what I do. But nice wood isn't always easy to come by, especially here in the UK, unless you have a lot of money to spend. Nice wood is expensive, but it should be. It's a commodity product, it doesn't grow on trees. Oh, wait. Anyway, about four years ago I made a video all about where I sourced wood from. And at the time I was living in the city of Norwich where there was often quite a lot of free materials out there to find as long as you were prepared to go looking for them. In that video I showed some of the regular places that I went looking for wood, including backstreet alleyways, communal bins and skips. And I found some nice things in that video, including a large hardwood pallet that later featured in a few of my projects. I also showed you around the reclamation yard that was local to me at the time and some of the reclaimed wood that they had available to buy. Since then though, things have changed quite a lot. I moved out of the city to the countryside where communal bins, skips and alleyways full of discarded materials are few and far between. So where do I get my timber now? The first resource I want to talk about I think is one which is often overlooked. Facebook Marketplace. If you have a Facebook account, I'd highly recommend checking it out. One of my favorite things about it is that it's a more intelligent version of the classified ads websites that used to be around, those like Gumtree in the UK and Craigslist in the USA. It actively remembers the things that you've searched for in the past and then when new items get listed which Facebook thinks you might be interested in, it displays those items to you at the top of your feed. And that's really handy because it takes a lot of the work out of searching for things that you might be interested in buying. I look at it maybe a couple of times a day just to see if there's anything that pops up that is of interest to me and it does a pretty good job at knowing what I might like. So let's have a look at it now and I'll also show you some of the search terms that I use in order to find materials. So I'll open up Facebook Marketplace using this button on the left hand side and as you can see it's immediately showing things I've searched for previously so you'll see things like wood and tools. Oh and I was looking to get some gravel recently too so I guess that's why that's there. Let's have a look at this one. This looks like a big block of sapili to me. And this is only a short drive away from where I live. Some really decent sized pieces there and that shorter piece would be good for a turning project. Let's see what else there is. Free wooden crates. Some decent lengths of usable timber there and for free, so what's not to like? Some people just want to get rid of stuff that's not useful to them ASAP, so you could often pick up quite a lot of free stuff. What's this? Offcuts from our bandsaw, hardwoods and softwoods. These pieces aren't massive, but for anyone into making smaller projects or maybe wood turning, there's a fair bit of usable timber here for £15 if you're willing to cut all of the bark away and mill it into some usable pieces. Let's try a search and we'll start with the basics, I'll just put wood. Big pile of scrap wood here, definitely worth a rummage in there I reckon, although most of it looks like soft wood and construction timber and pallet wood, but still. Plenty of uses for all of that stuff. What's this one? Wood for turners and furniture makers, £1.50 per pound in weight. No idea if that's a good deal or not, and this is one of the problems when you want to buy wood. People sell it in so many different ways. Some price it per length, some people price it per metre, some by foot, and here is someone selling it by weight. It can be so difficult to get an idea of what is a good price and what isn't. And the whole imperial versus metric thing doesn't help. In the UK we went metric in 1965, so you'd think by now everything would be standardised, but absolutely not. For example, all our speed limit sides on our roads are still in miles rather than kilometres, and a lot of stuff is still sold in feet and inches, and this guy is selling wood by the pound rather than by the kilogram. I don't think that's ever going to change, unfortunately, which means you kind of have to learn both metric and imperial to get an understanding of what you're buying. I'll just go through a few more of these quickly. Probably some nice pieces in there. Be nice to have a rummage through that shelf. More free wood here, pallets, that kind of stuff. Shiplap, ah, oh, this is interesting as I'm planning to build a shed at some point in the near future. So I'm interested in this. So I'm going to click save. And then when I'm ready to buy some, I can compare the prices on here with what I can find elsewhere at my local timber merchants. Right, that's enough of that. Let's try timber. Some more shiplap here. I'll save that one too. So yeah, pretty much the same kind of stuff. Let's try oak. Some oak planks here, £25 each, six foot lengths. They don't look six foot to me, but who knows. This is definitely oak though. As you can see, it has these kind of weird wavy flecks down here. And that only occurs in oak, I believe. So that's one of the best ways to recognize it, in my opinion. 
One thing to be careful of actually is that a lot of people will sell things as oak that aren't actually oak. I think some people just think that anything that's made of wood is oak. Some people are completely oblivious to the thousands of other species of wood out there. I've seen some people selling dining tables that are clearly made of pine as solid oak. So be careful and make sure you know what you're buying. Solid oak newel posts, one meter in length by 90 millimeters square, 40 pounds or 75 pounds for both. Oak sleepers, not a bad price. Sometimes it can be worth picking up old pieces of furniture and reusing the materials. Let's have a look at this oak coffee table. The first thing I always look for is along here where you'd expect to see end grain because you can see the grain of the wood is running this way. And it's hard to tell from this picture, but I think this does look like end grain where you can see the growth rings. If you see side grain along this edge where it should be end grain, then it's almost certainly a veneered piece of furniture that's been edge banded or trimmed rather than solid wood. So that's another thing to look out for. Solid oak beam, 250 pounds. That's a big piece of oak, but that seems quite expensive really to me. Here's an offcut of solid oak worktop. These come up quite a lot too. I've used that stuff in projects before. But again, be careful because some people will list this as oak when it's actually laminate over a chipboard substrate. Again, always look for the end grain. Let's try sapili. Someone here selling oak, ash and sapili. How about pine? Here's a free bed and pine bed slats are always so handy to have. I've made a lot of different projects using those over the years and that's free. Let's try hardwood. 30 pounds for these three boards. Not sure what wood this is. Judging by the color variation, it could be mango wood maybe or Maranti. Who knows, hard to tell. Let's try plywood. Some hardwood veneer ply here for 24 pounds for a 12 millimeter sheet. That's a pretty good price. Not sure what they mean by at 18 millimeters. I presume they mean they sell both 12 and 18 millimeters, but who knows. Some 15 millimeter softwood ply for 20 pounds a sheet. Again, a much better price than you're likely to find at your local DIY store. Here's some secondhand ply, and I'm going to save this one too, because at eight pounds a sheet, that's going to be really useful for my upcoming shed project as well. That's a good find. So hopefully from that you get the idea. It's also worth using the same search terms depending on what you're looking for on the likes of eBay. Often there'll be wood for sale on there at reasonable prices and you can look at the pictures to get an idea of what you're actually buying too, which I think is really important. I know there are online retailers that specialize in selling wood and delivering it to your door, but you never really get to see the boards that you're buying, so you don't know what you're going to get. And also those services tend to be really expensive, certainly wherever I've looked into it in the past anyway. If there are any online websites selling timber that you think are reasonably priced, do please pop down your recommendations in the comments section below for others to see. So that's my experience of looking for wood online, but often you might want to perhaps buy a larger quantity of wood for a bigger project or you might just want to go and choose some boards in person. Another really good source of timber is wood recycling centers. There are a few of those across the UK and often they're run as social enterprises. They acquire wood from construction and demolition sites and waste wood from joinery shops and timber mills and they prepare it and make it available to buy, usually at very reasonable prices. And I believe they usually grade it too based on what it might be useful for in terms of reuse. The only problem is that you're lucky if you've got one nearby. There aren't any anywhere near me, as far as I'm aware anyway, so I've never had the opportunity to go to one personally, but I definitely recommend going onto Google and searching for wood recycling centers in case there's one close to you. Reclamation yards are definitely worth a look too, but it's worth checking what kind of materials they stock before you visit because some yards only sell things like paving slabs and bricks. It might be worth picking up the phone or dropping them an email and asking whether they stock any hardwoods or softwoods before you visit. Next I'll cover timber merchants. Timber merchants come in various different forms. Many of them only sell exterior grade softwood timber, things like pressure treated gate posts, fence panels, gates, that kind of stuff. Others specialize mainly in construction timber, usually softwood, 2x4s, 2x6s, 2x8s. Usual species are things like pine, spruce or fir. They might sell hardwoods too, like beech, oak, maranti and sapili. And usually they'll also sell things like battens, mouldings, sheet materials, both softwood and hardwood plywood, OSB, and some sell the really nice furniture grade birch plywood as well. There are other timber merchants that specialize in hardwood and exotic timbers. 
but those are a bit more few and far between. I actually have one not too far away from me, but I've actually not yet visited. I will do it at some point though, and when I do, I'll try to sneak my camera in and show you around. The thing about timber merchants is that they're predominantly there to serve tradesmen and construction companies with large quantities of timber. And that means they're not always set up very well to serve individual customers looking for small quantities of wood for smaller projects. Most of them will be open to and will sell to anyone that comes in, but just bear in mind that going to buy timber from a timber merchant is nothing like going to buy a loaf of bread from a supermarket. Many of them won't be set up to allow people to go walking around their yards, picking out individual boards. It's more likely that if you want to buy, for example, a few bits of oak, they'll tell you what lengths and dimensions they have available. They'll give you a price, often either per foot or per meter, often excluding VAT too, so be aware of that. And you basically get what you're given and you load it into your vehicle and that's you done. I'm sure there are other timber merchants out there that are a bit more accommodating, but certainly the ones that I've been to and bought from are set up for supplying large orders to large companies and that's their main focus because that's where they make their money and I don't want to inconvenience them so whenever I go I tend to try and get what I want from them as quickly as possible without wasting their time. That's not to say they're unhelpful though, just last week actually I had a commission to make a dining table which originally I was planning to use scaffold boards for but the customer asked for something a little thicker, so I called my local timber merchant. I told them what approximate dimensions I was after. They confirmed that they had some 195 by 45 millimeter P4E SPF boards, which means planed for edges, spruce, pine, or fir. They gave me a price per meter, I paid for them and went and picked them up. I always tend to order a bit more than I think I'll need for a project. That way, if there are any defects or cracks in the boards, I'll still have enough to work with and I can use whatever's left over in a future project. Generally you'll find that their timber will be much better quality than the stuff you'll find in the DIY stores which I'll talk about later and often it'll be cheaper too. Then there are builders merchants which operate in a similar way to timber merchants in many ways but they sell other stuff as well. They often have less variety of wood available to buy though and they are more expensive too so if you can find a timber merchant selling what you need then that's probably going to be your best option but often it might come down to convenience for example i have builders merchants practically on my doorstep so if they have what i need i'm often happy to pay a bit extra to save an hour of my time driving to go and collect something both timber and builder merchants will also do discounts if you open a trade account with them, especially if you plan to buy things from them frequently, so it's worth asking what the requirements are for that. If you're a DIYer, you may not qualify, but my local builder's merchants just asked me to provide a business card, which I already had on me, and my address, and that was all they needed to set up a trade account for me. If you're looking specifically for free wood, if you know anyone working in any kind of trade really, it's worth asking them. A lot of companies will have yards full of things like pallets, pallet collars, pieces of plywood that have been used as packaging on crates, all sorts of stuff really, and often they'll need to pay to get rid of it because to them it's waste that needs to be disposed of. Just be careful though because it's impossible to tell what things like pallets have been used for in the past. They might have been used to move toxic chemicals around for example and you don't want to go making a chopping board or a cot for your newborn baby from something like that. If you use it, do so at your own risk, and I'll leave a link in the description box below to an article that is useful in helping to determine which pallets might be the safer ones to use. You can often also find pallets all over the place on retail parks and industrial estates, but always ask before you take anything. If you know of any joinery companies or carpentry companies nearby who make hardwood doors and windows, stuff like that, definitely worth asking them if they have any offcuts that you might be able to buy from them. Not something I've ever done personally, but I've heard of others that have had success with that approach. And again, to them, it's waste material that they probably have to pay to dispose of, so they might be happy to let you take some away for free. Then there are DIY stores, and I've left them last for a reason, as in my opinion, they should be a last resort for buying timber. Having said that, they might be more convenient to buy from, easier to get to, and it's going to be easier to understand their pricings as well. But on the downside, you'll probably find that their timber is usually of a much lower quality. For example, often their construction grade timber is usually fast grown, which means it's lighter in weight, less durable, less strong and far more prone to warping and twisting. 
If you've ever tried to find a straight 3x2 in a DIY store, then you'll probably understand what I mean. Often their timber is improperly stored, not dried out sufficiently prior to sale. Sheet materials are also of a much lower grade, plywood with loads of hollow voids in the layers and face veneers so thin that often you can see through them. Then there's the low quality MDF which has a kind of furry texture in the middle. It splits far too easily and it doesn't paint well either. In fact, just last week I was actually making some wardrobe doors for my brother using some MDF from a DIY shop and it wasn't until we painted it that we noticed it had these nasty grooves in it. But we didn't notice those imperfections until we got a coat of paint on it. Just poor quality stuff and sometimes it works out more expensive when compared to a timber merchant's too. So if you shop for timber at a DIY store, while it might be more convenient, don't expect good quality materials or value for money. That's it for this one. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so via PayPal or Patreon. Links to those in the description box below. On Patreon, you can get early access to my videos, some exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.